Uh, Professor Anton just uh, woke up and got my coffee here. <laughs> um, guilt, eh? Uh, it's a gigantic topic. It's uh, one of the big five, or maybe one, one could even say the big two. Uh, big questions of existence. Responsibility. Um, accountability. Now, first of all, um, you pointed out that I might be misusing the term uh, existential guilt, and I agree that I might be sort of using the wrong terminology, or using terminology as, as it, is, it is not um, commonly used. But when I say existential guilt, I'm not referring to Sartre's uh, notion of being forced to be free. Um, I'm saying, um, I'm referring actually to, you know, the stereotypical Catholic guilt. The guilt at, um, the guilt that one feels at simply existing. Simply by virtue of your own existence, you are somehow corrupting the world. You are somehow uh, bringing evil into the world by your own existence. That's heavy guilt. Um, and that's the kind of thing that uh, a lot of people who have had experiences with guilt of the Catholic variant will tell you about. Um, although it's not, it's not, by the way, um, limited to religion. Uh, say at the killing fields of Chengek in uh, in Cambodia, when you go and you see those places, uh, a lot of the denunciations of the people that were executed, um, there was a great deal of guilt involved, as you pointed out as well. Um, by virtue of the class that you were born into, or the position that you held in life, or whatever, you were somehow existentially guilty, and the only way that your guilt could be expunged is by your physical elimination. Um, a lot of totalitarian states operate that way. Uh, that's what I mean by existential guilt. I understand that if you use existential, it brings up the idea of the existentialist philosophers and everything like that. And if you ask me, in a sense, these people were kind of the opposite. They showed you a way out of that. Um, I think that uh, uh, in uh, La Peste by uh, Camus, he showed a way out of existential guilt. Um, and uh, by being an existentialist, although, eh, we, uh, you know, well, we can argue that point. What, what does existentialism mean? And, you know, Camus would be the first to object to my, or the colloquial application of the term to him. But anyway, um, yes, mea culpa. Um, I don't, I didn't really mean it the way that the existentialists would have used the term guilt or responsibility, forced to be free, acting in the world, that kind of thing. Um, but secondly, I want to point out that I believe that guilt is, um, as you say, a, uh, what do you call it? A pang. It's a chastisement. Um, it's not a good feeling. Now, um... Getting tossed into jail is not a good feeling, and it's often a deliberately unpleasant thing. Um, tying somebody up in the central square of a city and flogging them, or just uh, sticking them in the pillory or the stocks in the old days where people could come up and look at them and say, see, this person is a bad person. I guess you could throw rotten eggs at them if you wanted as well. Uh, but the idea was, this is unpleasant. This isn't nice. What is what? What you know? What we're doing to this person, and we know that it's not nice, and it's deliberately not nice. But it is necessary because we live in an imperfect world, and we don't know any other way to get into that person's head and stop their disruptive behavior. Guilt is in many ways an admission of failure. I, I agree that it is a pang. It is sort of a little corrective that said, you know, the little voice in your head says, hey, you're going wrong. Um, it might be a necessary thing, but it's not a good thing. I can't see any way in which you can show guilt as a good thing. Um, 
arresting somebody, putting him in handcuffs, and tossing him into the back of a car is not a good thing. But sometimes it's a necessary thing, even perhaps, I guess, for that person's own good, because the damage that they could cause is more severe than they would otherwise uh, uh, have done if we hadn't sort of said, you are guilty of something. Um, we live in an imperfect world, and something's got to be done. Society has to be managed. But let's be under no illusions that the the tools that we have to hand in this imperfect plane of existence are imperfect. And they don't always work properly. And they can be abused. Um, I might agree that if somebody steals my car, it might be a good idea to toss the guy in the clink for a while um, and let him think it over if he's ever going to do that again. But uh, that's not a good thing to throw somebody into into prison. By the same token, I might sort of think, hmm, look at that beautiful woman walking up the beach in her bikini. Hey, there's uh, nobody around. Ooh, look what I can do here. Now, I have to believe that there's more to my decision not to do <clears throat> what, you know, one could assume might come next than simple fear of guilt. Um the fear of punishment, the fear of my own inner punishment, the fear of uh, a restraint that is put on me, um, a leash that's put on sort of the Saurian part of my character. I like to think that I can look at a potential source of harm or a potential bad act and say, do I really want to do that? Now, be honest, Andy. Do you really want to do that? Now, that's if you ask me how one overcomes one's, I don't know, sinful nature. You don't sort of say, oh, that's terrible, that's an awful thing for me to do, to go out and inflict myself upon that person who has done me no harm at all. Um, and... I have to sort of take this big stick and beat my other nature down and have fight this big inner war, this inner battle, and I might have to attack my own body and repress it uh, because it really wants to do something here. Um, what I would do is, uh, ideally here, again, we don't live in a perfect world and we still do need handcuffs, prisons, cops, judges, etc. Um, I'm not talking about practically here. I'm talking about um, in terms of guilt and the guilt that goes on up here. Um, ideally, what I do is I sort of say, okay, I do what I want to do. I do perhaps not even what I want to do. I do what seems to be the quickest route to self-gratification. Now what? Am I gratified? Probably not. Work this out in your head. Okay. Work this out in your head. If you want something, go and get it. Um, the Catholic variant of guilt, and a lot of guilt traditions say, make sure that you don't want that thing. And if you do want it, then apply brute force to that want and beat it down. Um internally. The, I don't know, the Eastern, Hindu, I don't know, Taoist, whatever that tradition would be vaguely called, says, if you want something, go get it. Watch. <laughs> um, do you really want that? Go ahead. You want that chocolate bar? Go get it. You eat the chocolate bar, or are you commit the brutal act and examine yourself. Are you a better person? Are you more satisfied? Are you more at peace? Are you more true within yourself? No, you're not. <laughs> um, now, some people would say, well, there are people out there that might be. Yes, I agree. That's where we 
uh, call in the police with the handcuffs, and the judges, and the jails. Um, you know, we can't allow people to experiment that way. All these experiments should only take place here. Uh, we can't allow people to just, just sort of act on their impulses, go through with them, and sort of see if, hmm, did this actually make me feel better? Because what we've got, what we'll have is insanity. But you know, managing the outside world is not the same thing as fighting evil. Managing the outside world is not the same thing as making good people. You can't do that. Um, I can control people's behavior. I can uh, restrain people if need be. I can, um, I can coerce them. Uh, I can uh, punish them for what they've done after the fact in the hope of restraining other people or them the next time they might get the idea into their heads to do something like this. Um, but what I've done is at best um, a very flawed and faulty solution to the problem. This is what I see guilt as. It's a form of mental or internal flogging. So when you get into somebody's head or their heart and you apply brute force to them, you haven't made them a better person. You've simply taken the, um, the flogging from the town square in Saudi Arabia and you've put it in here. The end result is the same, um, especially when it's coupled with things like shame. When somebody gets publicly sandbagged as this bad person, which we see all the time on CNN, on um, you know the news in general, there's the bad guy that locked all those people into their you know those three women into the basement. We sandbag the guy, we shame him, and then we lock him away forever. Um, there, well, we've done justice in society. No, we haven't. We haven't made him into a good person. We have taken a bad situation and we have applied a very imperfect solution to it. Um, probably the only solution that's possible in this plane of existence. Um, we have shamed this guy. We have uh, coerced him in the interests of the women of the world. They have to be protected. I'll be the first one to admit that. Uh, again, that's why we have prisons and cops and things like that. But let's not kid ourselves. Um, sandbagging and guilting this guy, um, pointing, you know, holding him up in front of the entirety of the society as this bad person is scapegoating, and it might be necessary scapegoating. It's not a good thing. Um, guilt is at best up there with that. Um, you want to be good, you can't be good by um, simply um, having the lash applied to you. And I can't see guilt of any form at all as anything other than the lash. If it were that simple, all that we would have to do is do what the Catholic Church does and guilt the living shit out of each other for eternity and we will have created good people. <laughs> Thanks for your response.